taking the review for you guys for, for the sidewalk. So many of you that know me personally will know that this car's called Violet. Now I just wanted to clear this thing up straight away because it's always been a bit of a, um, a thing with the car. Why is the car blue but called Violet? A simple answer for that, those old school sweets. When I got bought this car, I had it about a year or so, I didn't stop finding anything but Palmer Violet packets, door pockets, cubby holes everywhere. Um, and then when I stripped the car under the carpets, they were everywhere. <laughs> so I don't know which owner in its life liked them. I'm a fan, a massive fan of them. Um, but this is an old air freshener I had in here from when she was very first put on the road. Um, but yeah, that's why she's got a name. So I wanted to clear that up straight away. But the car itself, it's a 1995 Rover Mini Sidewalk LE. Uh, they made a thousand of them. Um, it's loads of different mixed reviews online of how many of each color they made. Um, but obviously if you want to do a bit of research guys, you can go find out. But basically they made blue, gray, charcoal gray color. So Kingfisher blue, charcoal gray. And they actually made a limited run of white ones. So the white being the rarest, the grey being the second rarest and the blue they made the most of. Now, a lot of people say, well, do you not want a rarer one? No, I only bought this car because of the colour. I bought it for the East Tartan seats and this Kingfisher blue. So that is why I own this car. That just about clears up the colour of the car. So I'm out on a little drive now. It's a beautiful bank holiday Monday and what better day to take the car out for a drive. So like I mentioned, the car's called Violet. She's Kingfisher blue. That's cleared that up right there. Um, there's a bit of controversy to how many actually were made because like the white was primarily made for the export come, like export market, so for Japan and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not getting into that. I don't own the car because it's a rare car or a desirable car because it's limited edition. I couldn't care less about that in my opinion. I, I bought it because it's got the tartan seats and I, I think the colour is the most perfect colour a Mini can be in. I honestly adore this colour. I'm not a massive fan of the later Minis. Um, and this being five years from the end of production, it's quite a late Mini really. way to describe it and it's in that that magazine feature is they de-rover a mini um, they get rid of all the little rover features anything that makes it look new and they make it look old and that for me fits everything I love about mini perfect so I've got a modern color car an SPI fuel injection system so I've got a, a later mini a modern mini so to speak but I've actually got all the sort of looks that I've wanted now by changing it of an older mini so that's the rear lights that's the overriders it's the uh, I've got the original grill back on it now that has changed recently um I like a single spot lamp driver's lamp um the only thing that does sort of remain very rover in the side is the seats and things like that because I don't want to lose a limited edition out of it that is one thing um I do apologize that is a very bumpy road um there's one thing I didn't want to lose from the car so we'll pull up now find a nice location and I'll walk you around the car and the reasons why I've done what I've done I don't 
I know a lot of the stuff on this car isn't for everyone. I get comments like, why have you got Japanese import plates on the car? It's not an import. It's because it follows the look of the car and I actually think it looks different. It sets mine apart from anyone else's. I love the tilt look of the number plate. I love the square number plate. I just think it looks a bit different. So I'll run through now everything about the car that I've done, reasons why I've done it. And we'll go from there. This is something that's been sort of brewing on the channel for a little while now. Um, people have wanted to see the car and I've also wanted to answer a few questions by quite a few negative comments that I have had about the car over the years. So starting from the front, changes. There's some recent changes if you have seen and sort of been following the channel as I have changed the grill back to the original style. Um, not quite finished. I've got some bonnet straps to go on. They were originally on, meant to go on as was the spotlight. The spotlight is so controversial. It's unreal. Um, I know it's not for everyone. I love it. It's an, also another sort of a Japanese thing um, that I've noticed out there. It's also a very early 60s thing. It's just have a single driver's lamp. But then normally it's accompanied by a fog light the other side. Me, I'd like to be different. So I've got a, a Lumex light. I've also got a Mark III badge on the front. So that's slightly different. There's the tilt plate. I've got a Japanese, or well not a Japanese, sorry. I've got a, a race style towing eye, which has gone a bit rusty because it's been recovered. Also a feature on this car that no one ever notices is these indicators. So these are off um, an Italian style Mini and I've relocated them. So it's got earlier wings on the car and the side repeaters are up here instead of a square one that would be about there. So that's something that not everyone notices. Um, while I'm here, let's talk about the wheels. So these are 10 by 6 RN image split rims. Um, I was very, very lucky to know the person that had these made and he said, you're doing a Japanese car, these are perfect. Um, and I'm very, very grateful for that. He knows who he is. I'm not going to mention names, but yeah, I keep toying with the idea of just changing them just for a change, but I couldn't. I love them. Um, another feature is the arches are color coded. I've done the arches and the boot lamp. That is also another feature to lose the plasticky Rover look. And moving around the side of the car, we've got various stickers of shows and bits and pieces. So we've got players classics there. Um, obviously, Instagram, if you're not following us on there. Our sponsor's Frost. These are some Japanese stickers. Obviously, that's an American one, just a, a show that I really enjoy. Um, Speedwell is something I really, really love. The old tuning company Speedwell, you'll see this a lot on this car. Um, original decals, sort of see them there. Right, guys, moving around the back of the car, there's some things you'll straight away notice. So, you've got the earlier Mark II, Mark III style lights. I just love the look of them. Clean and fresh, no reverse light, just looks so nice color-coded boot lamp, JDM plate again, um, decals originally. Also, there's a towing light at the back. Um, it's obviously, I don't really use it, it's just more for the looks. Um, that's again, another feature that I really enjoy and really quite like from the Japanese sort of racy looking minis. Um, I've got a relocated fog lamp, so it's on a stainless plinth. Um, and there, you can also see the little checkered bit. It's also another feature. All these things are picked because I like, not because it's a Japanese feature. I just want my car to be unique and different. Um, a recent inst installation is also my RC40 exhaust. Um, it's made the car a lot dry more drivable and quiet. Also, if you haven't grabbed yourself a sticker, quick plug there for stickers. Grab yourself a sticker, guys. They're going quick. Moving around, I did say you'd see a lot of Speedwell. So I've got a Speedwell Performance fuel bib. So. I really like this, it's really cool. So I've still got my normal fuel cap in there, but I just really like these, I think they're great. This is a proper one from Japan. Um, there's loads of reproductions, but that is actually from Japan. I spent quite a bit of money importing parts. Um, again, you've got the wheels, obviously. Uh, this side, we've got one of our old style stickers that some of you are very lucky to have. There is a very, very limited run of these, I think, left, but they have all gone. Can make them again, if anyone is interested. And here we've got a few shows and events I've been to. So I've done a couple of underwritings in this car. Um, Caffeine Machines, awesome place, been there. Very dear place to my heart, it's heartbeat. Um, I do really enjoy going to Gofland. Um, Cars and Coffees, me, IMM. Um, various clubs 60 years a million bits and pieces like that so i have these stickers this car a lot um, anyone knows personally knows i bloody love a sticker but yeah i've these stickered this car a lot um obviously you've got the same sort of swap round on this side same features uh i've got these extra stainless covers just to make the lights look a bit older and a little bit different um i quite like them i think they look i think they look pretty good so it's just again something to be a bit different moving around to the car we've got evolution tex mirrors so these are fully adjustable and you can actually see through these. So yeah, looking inside, let's move into the inside. So you've got this lovely tart interior. 
Um, this was also something I won. This is a little surfboard. Uh, it's not my car, um, Mini Center Mountains. Um, and it's, it's, I think it's called the Surfboard Company. It basically makes bespoke stuff for your car. So find him on Instagram, it's a great, great guy. Um, but yeah, you've got the typical Rover Mini sidewalk interior in here, bar a few things I've changed. So the car came with a wooden dash in it and I actually don't like these wooden dashes much. I've actually replaced it with another one. But again, I'm, I'm much further just not to have one, to be honest. But it's purely because the binnacles have now been modified. So I've sort of kept with it. I've got a aftermarket little MP3 there. Um, oh, sorry, like a Bluetooth head unit. MP3, how old's that? Um, <laughs> Bluetooth head unit. Um, again, a few stickers. Again, you can move around and you can see another Speedwell item there. This is from straight from Japan. Turtle Trading's where I've got a lot of my stuff. And we have a cup holder. Everyone loves this cup holder. So this is, again, it was actually from Japan, but they do actually sell these in ABS Motorsports in the UK now. So you can get hold of one. Um, various mounts for you guys to get some footage. And then I've got my, my phone mount. Um, my seat is currently broken. So there is a cushion sat there, which you would have seen in a previous episode when me, Sam and Tony are out and James was driving it and pretty much sat on the floor. But my original plan for this car was to have a driver's bucket seat. When I drove the car daily, I did have a different seat. I had a Cobra uh, Clubman seat in there. So I am on the lookout for a nice sort of either JDM seat or just a nice bucket seat, really. Um, just because I drive the car primarily a lot on my own. And yeah, I think it would be, just think it would suit the look. So um, moving down here, it's very basic. A little Paddy Hopkirk gear gator, a few shows and bits and pieces I've been to. So yeah, in the back, I've got my lucky mascot, my little French bulldog. Um, then obviously I do have two cushions, but one's now sat on underneath me. And I've got this, which my other half bought for me at a show many years ago. So it's all these little gimmicky things that I sort of just collect along the way. Any mini owner would have stuff like this, I guess. Any classic car owner collects bits and pieces, but this car is probably the longest car I've ever owned. Um, getting on for nine, eight or nine years now. So yeah, it's, it's accumulated a few things over the years. Um, I've also got a model there that has been completely made to look like the car as well, so it's not quite finished. Um, a bow in the back, if anyone's ever wondering about that, that's from a wedding this car is at. James, James's wedding, um, he asked for this car to be sort of centre stage. It was the colour of their wedding, and obviously I was completely honoured to do that. So, but yeah, moving from the interior, there's not really much going on. You've got the steering wheel, which matches sidewalk, tarth interior, and bits and pieces like that. Right guys, thank you for watching this video. I wanted to take the time just to walk around this car because I get a lot of questions about it on Instagram and Facebook and whatnot. Um, it is a little bit different. It's not for everyone. At the end of the day, if we all had the same, it'd be a pretty boring world, wouldn't it? Um, so I hope I sort of have highlighted the areas that maybe people have asked questions about. Um, I know for one that the single spotlight isn't for everyone and I know the Japanese plates aren't for everyone. But for me, it sets my car apart. It follows the look and the vision I've always wanted. And that's all it really matters to me. But moving forward, what would I like to do with the car? So number one, the car's not getting sold. Um, a lot of people think I'm mad to think out of the, the fleet that we have got, this would be the last one to go. It is purely sentimental value. Um, I'm not bothered if this car maybe gets a little bit worse as in condition wise and stuff like that. I'll just fix it again. Um, it doesn't bother me and that's it that side of things um but future plans for the car i i can mention it earlier on in the video i'm not very happy with the dash and never have been so there's probably an area of improvement there it's not finished behind it's just wires um but i might go back to the original look who knows we'll find out we'll see what happens um so that's that is something that i do want to address um there's some areas on the paintwork that i'm not particularly happy with but i'm now at a point where i actually don't like perfect cars i've never been one of those people to want a perfect car um, one of the reasons why I wanted to tackle the budget clubman was just to have a go. Um, this car is not perfect, like bodywork wise on this, it's not perfect at all. Um, it was my first attempt, at, I haven't painted this car, um, but it was my first attempt at the bodywork. Um, and panel gaps and that sort of stuff I'm pretty happy with. There's nothing like that that I'm not that ha happy with, but there's areas of the car that are starting to show age and have been damaged, i.e. stone chips and things like that. But I really love a car that looks its age and it's now back to how I remember it. Um, when I first bought it, bar a lot less rust because um, I had holes in my wings and all sorts of stuff. Um, but yeah, so regarding the bodywork, no, I don't think I'll change anything on that over the next few years. I just want to maintain it. Um, this car gets regularly washed and cleaned and waxed and stuff like that. Um, there's another video coming on that. Um, 
the driver's seat is something I do want to address. The driver's seat for me is very uncomfortable now. And I've also mentioned in a previous episode that I would like to get rid of the seat out of here, not get rid of it as in throw it in a bin. But this car is quite rare. It's in sense the, the interior is quite hard to find. You, there's no one that makes these interiors. Newton Commercial don't remake the covers or anything like that. So I have got to preserve what I've got. So the bolsters and things like that are still really good on this car. So I, I don't want to ruin the seat. It just needs a new diaphragm. That's all it needs. But for me, it's that excuse now, right, put the seat you want in it. So that's what's going to happen in that respect. So the seat will change. So keep an eye out for that on the on the page and stuff like that. But yeah, other than that, I've got her exactly how I want her. Now I've done now I've done the spotlight and swapped the grill back. I was never a massive fan of the wavy grill. I love them, but I, I always was a bit like, mm, um, I don't know if it's right. But um, I really, I, like I said, I did enjoy the car, how it looks like that. Um, the grill is now going to go on to the 89 build, so it's never going to go to waste. Um, we're, we're all about <laughs> utilising parts of Simpsons Classics. So, um, yeah, so moving on from that, there's 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 loads, I guess, that you could do. But um, over the winter, I want to improve the brakes. Um, our, our recent jollies out has really highlighted my brakes aren't the best. Um, it's Cooper Esque conversion up front, but it's just... It's just I guess for faster roads and stuff it just needs to be a bit better so four bots come in on that um there's a few bushes and bits and pieces that i want to get on with that um during covid we just never got the chance so yeah there's always something to be done it's a mini it's never finished um but the basic look of the car now is how i want it i normally run with a roof rack on it as well i've got like a patina style roof rack which i adore i think it looks great um so that's normally on here as well so if you see it shows it's normally on but yeah, that's really about it. I'm going to stop going on about my car that I'm that passionate about. I will leave you guys with a, a few shots now at the end. But if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button and hit a thumbs up. Um, if you have any other questions on the car, just please you know drop in the comments below and ask away. The next one. If you haven't already, check out our website for some stickers. Um, yeah, onwards and upwards. More stuff to come. Street weapon, but she makes me smile.